Walter Arnold Kaufmann July 1, 1921 to September 4, 1980, was a German-American philosopher, translator, and poet. A prolific author, he wrote extensively on a broad range of subjects, such as authenticity and death, moral philosophy and existentialism, theism and atheism, Christianity and Judaism, as well as philosophy and literature. He served more than 30 years as a professor at Princeton University. He is renowned as a scholar and translator of Friedrich Nietzsche. He also wrote a 1965 book on Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel and published a translation of Goethe's Faust. Biography Kaufman was raised a Lutheran. At age 11, finding that he believed neither in the Trinity nor in the divinity of Jesus, he converted to Judaism. Kaufman subsequently discovered that his grandparents were all Jewish. Kaufman left Germany and emigrated to America in 1939 and began studying at Williams College, where he majored in philosophy and took many religion classes. Although he had the opportunity to move immediately into his graduate studies in philosophy, and despite advice not to do so by his professors, he ultimately joined the war effort against the Nazis by serving in U.S. intelligence. During World War II, he fought on the European front for 15 months. After the war, he completed a Ph.D. in the philosophy of religion at Harvard in a mere two years. His dissertation was titled, Nietzsche's Theory of Values, and eventually became a chapter in his Nietzsche, Philosopher, Psychologist, Antichrist 1950. He spent his entire career thereafter, from 1947 to 1980, teaching philosophy at Princeton University, where his students included the Nietzsche scholars Frithjof Bergman, Richard Schacht, Alexander Nahamas, and Ivan Saul. Kaufman became a naturalized citizen of the United States of America in 1960. Topic. Philosophical work In a 1959 article in Harper's Magazine, he summarily rejected all religious values and practice, especially the liberal Protestantism of continental Europe that began with Schleiermacher and culminated in the writings of Paul Tillich and Rudolf Bultmann. In their place, he praised moralists such as the biblical prophets, the Buddha, and Socrates. He argued that critical analysis and the acquisition of knowledge were liberating and empowering forces. He forcefully criticized the fashionable liberal Protestantism of the 20th century as filled with contradictions and evasions, preferring the austerity of the Book of Job and the Jewish existentialism of Martin Buber. Kaufman discussed many of these issues in his 1958 critique of religion and philosophy. Kaufman wrote a good deal on the existentialism of Soren Kierkegaard and Karl Jaspers. Kaufman had great admiration for Kierkegaard's passion and his insights on freedom, anxiety, and individualism. Kaufman wrote, Nobody before Kierkegaard had seen so clearly that the freedom to make a fateful decision that may change our character and future breeds anxiety. Although Kaufman did not share Kierkegaard's religious outlook and was critical of his Protestant theology, Kaufman was nevertheless sympathetic and impressed with the depth of Kierkegaard's thinking. I know of no other great writer in the whole 19th century, perhaps even in the whole of world literature, to whom I respond with less happiness and with a more profound sense that I am on trial and found wanting, unless it were Soren Kierkegaard. Kaufman edited the anthology Existentialism from Dostoevsky to Sartre. Kaufman disliked Martin Heidegger's thinking, along with his unclear writing. Kaufman is renowned for his translations and exegesis of Nietzsche, whom he saw as gravely misunderstood by English speakers, as a major early existentialist, and as an unwitting precursor, in some respects, to Anglo-American analytic philosophy. Llewellyn Jones wrote that Kaufman's fresh insights into Nietzsche can deepen the insights of every discriminating student of literature, and The New Yorker wrote that Kaufman has produced what may be the definitive study of Nietzsche's thought an informed, scholarly, and lustrous work. Kaufman wrote that superficially less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 it also seems that as a philosopher Nietzsche represents a very sharp decline from Kant and Hegel because Nietzsche has no system, yet this argument is hardly cogent. Not only can one defend Nietzsche on this score, but one must add that he had strong philosophic reasons for not having a system. 
Kaufmann also sympathized with Nietzsche's acerbic criticisms of Christianity. However, Kaufmann faulted much in Nietzsche, writing that, "...my disagreements with Nietzsche are legion." Regarding style, Kaufmann argued that Nietzsche's thus spoke Zarathustra, for example, is in parts badly written, melodramatic, or verbose, yet concluded that the book, "...is not only a mine of ideas, but also a major work of literature and a personal triumph." Kaufman described his own ethic and his own philosophy of living in his books, including the faith of a heretic, What Can I Believe? How Should I Live? What Do I Hope? 1961 and Without Guilt and Justice, From Decidophobia to Autonomy 1973. He advocated living in accordance with what he proposed as the four cardinal virtues, ambition, humility, love, courage, and honesty. Topic. Partial bibliography. Topic. Original works Nietzsche, philosopher, psychologist, antichrist From Shakespeare to existentialism Existentialism, from Dostoevsky to Sartre Critique of religion and philosophy Tragedy and philosophy Hegel, a reinterpretation The faith of a heretic, what can I believe? How should I live? What do I hope? Without Guilt and Justice, From Decidophobia to Autonomy Cain and Other Poems Existentialism, Religion, and Death, Thirteen Essays The Future of the Humanities Religions in Four Dimensions Discovering the Mind, a trilogy consisting of Goethe, Kant, and Hegel Nietzsche, Heidegger, and Buber Freud vs. Adler and Jung Man's Lot, a trilogy, consisting of Life at the Limits Time as an Artist What is Man? Topic. Translations Twenty-five German poets superseded the earlier twenty German poets Goethe's Faust Part 1 and Selections from Part 2 Hegel, Texts and Commentary Judaism and Christianity, Essays by Leo Back I and Thou, by Martin Buber is written or published by Friedrich Nietzsche in chronological order. The Birth of Tragedy or, Hellenism and Pessimism The Gay Science, with a prelude in rhymes and an appendix of songs Thus Spoke Zarathustra, a book for all and none Beyond Good and Evil, prelude to a philosophy of the future On the Genealogy of Morals, with R. J. Hollingdale The Case of Wagner A Musician's Problem Twilight of the Idols How One Philosophizes with a Hammer The Antichrist Nietzsche contra Wagner Ecce Homo, How One Becomes What One Is The Will to Power with R. J. Hollingdale Topic. Anthologies, edited works The Portable Nietzsche. Viking. Basic writings of Nietzsche, designed to complement the preceding. Existentialism from Dostoevsky to Sartre Religion from Tolstoy to Camus, a companion to the preceding. Philosophic Classics, in two volumes, 1, 2 Hegel's Political Philosophy Topic. Articles, book chapters, and introductions Nietzsche's Admiration for Socrates. Journal of the History of Ideas, v. 9, October 1948, pp. 472-491. Earlier version. Nietzsche's Admiration for Socrates Bowdoin Prize, 1947, PSEUD. David Dennis. Goethe and the History of Ideas. Journal of the History of Ideas, v. 10, October 1949, pp. 503-516. The Hegel Myth and Its Method. Philosophical Review v.60, No. 4 October 1951, pp. 459-486. Some Typical Misconceptions of Nietzsche's Critique of Christianity. Philosophical Review v. 61, No. 4 October 1952, pp. 595-599. Hegel's Early Antitheological Phase. Philosophical Review v. 63, No. 1, January 1954, pp. 3 18. 
Nietzsche and Rilke. Kenyan Review, 17, 1955, pp. 1 to 23. Toynbee and Superhistory. Partisan Review, Volume 22, Number 4, Fall 1955, pp. 531 to 541. Reprinted in Ashley Montagu, ed. Toynbee and History, Critical Essays and Reviews, 1956 Cloth ed. Boston, Extending Horizons, Porter Sargent. ISBN 0-87558-026-2. A Hundred Years After Kierkegaard. Kenyon Review, 18, pp. 182-211. Jasper's Relation to Nietzsche. In Paul Schilp's, ed., The Philosophy of Karl Jaspers New York, Tudor, 1957, pp. 407-436. The Faith of a Heretic. Harper's Magazine, February 1959, pp. 33-39. Reprinted in Existentialism, Religion, and Death New York, New American Library, 1976. Existentialism and Death. Chicago Review, 13, 1959, pp. 73-93. Revised version reprinted in Existentialism, Religion, and Death New York, New American Library, 1976. Quote, quote, in the Meaning of Death, Herman Feifel, New York, The Blackiston Division, McGraw Hill, 1959. Preface to Europe and the Jews, The Pressure of Christendom on the People of Israel for 1900 Years, 2D ed., by Malcolm Hay. Boston, Beacon Press, 1961. A Philosopher's View. In Ethics and Business, Three Lectures. University Park, PA, 1962, pp. 35-54. Originally presented at a seminar sponsored by the College of Business Administration of the Pennsylvania State University on March 19, 1962. Nietzsche between Homer and Sartre, Five Treatments of the Orestes Story. Revue Internationale de Philosophie v. 18, 1964, pp. 50-73. Nietzsche in the Light of His Suppressed Manuscripts. Journal of the History of Philosophy v. 2, October 1964, pp. 205-226. Buber's Religious Significance. From the Philosophy of Martin Buber, ed. P. A. Schilp and Maurice Friedman London, Cambridge University Press, 1967 reprinted in Existentialism, Religion, and Death New York, New American Library, 1976. The Reception of Existentialism in the United States. Midway, Vol. 9, 1, Summer 1968, pp. 97-126. Reprinted in Existentialism, Religion, and Death New York, New American Library, 1976. Forward to Frau Lu, Nietzsche's Wayward Disciple, by Rudolf Binion. Princeton, New Jersey, Princeton University Press, 1969. Introductory Essay, Alienation Richard Schacht, Garden City, New York, Doubleday, 1970. The Future of Jewish Identity. The Jerusalem Post Magazine August 1, 1969, pp. 607. Reprinted in Congressional Bi-Weekly, April 3, 1970, in Conservative Judaism, Summer 1970, in New Theology No. 9, 1972, pp. 41-58, and in Existentialism, Religion, and Death New York, New American Library, 1976. Forward to an Introduction to Hegel's Metaphysics, by Ivan Saul. Chicago and London, University of Chicago Press, 1969. The Origin of Justice. Review of Metaphysics v. 23, December 1969, pp. 209-239. Beyond Black and White. Midway, v. 10 3, Winter 1970, pp. 49-79, also Survey No. 73, Autumn 1969, pp. 22-46. Reprinted in Existentialism, Religion, and Death New York, New American Library, 1976. Hegel's Ideas About Tragedy", in New Studies in Hegel's Philosophy, ed. Warren E. Steinkraus New York, Holt, Reinhardt and Winston, Inc., 1971, pp. 201-220. The Death of God and the Revaluation", in Robert Solomon, ed. Nietzsche, A Collection of Critical Essays New York, Anchor Press, 1973, pp. 9-28. The Discovery of the Will to Power. 
in Robert Solomon, ed. Nietzsche, A Collection of Critical Essays New York, Anchor Press, 1973, pp. 226–242. Forward in Truth and Value in Nietzsche, A Study of His Metaethics and Epistemology by John T. Wilcox. Ann Arbor, University of Michigan Press, 1974. Nietzsche and Existentialism. Symposium, a quarterly journal in modern foreign literatures, v. 28 1, Spring 1974, pp. 7–16. Reprinted in Existentialism, Religion, and Death New York, New American Library, 1976. Hegel's Conception of Phenomenology. In Phenomenology and Philosophical Understanding, Edo Pivchevic, ed. pp. 211–230 Unknown Feuerbach Autobiography. Times Literary Supplement 1976, 3887, 1123 1124. A Preface to Kierkegaard. In Soren Kierkegaard, The Present Age and of the Difference Between a Genius and an Apostle, Trans. Alexander Drew, Harper Torch Books, pp. 9 29. Reprinted in Existentialism, Religion, and Death, New York, New American Library, 1976. On Death and Lying, reprinted in Existentialism, Religion, and Death, New York, New American Library, 1976. Letter on Nietzsche, Times Literary Supplement 1978, 3960, 203. Buber's Failures and Triumph. Revue Internationale de Philosophie v. 32, 1978, pp. 441 459. Buber, of his Failures and Triumph. Encounter 52, 5, 31, 38, 1979. Reply to Letter, Encounter 55, 4, 95, 1980. Art, Tradition, and Truth. Partisan Review, 17, pp. 9-28. Topic. Sound recordings Professor. Kaufman discusses Sartre, Jaspers, Heidegger, Kierkegaard. Kierkegaard and the Crisis in Religion. Part 1 of three lectures. Nietzsche and the Crisis in Philosophy. Part 2 of three lectures. Sartre and the Crisis in Morality", Part 3 of three lectures. Oedipus Rex Homer and the Birth of Tragedy Aeschylus and the Death of Tragedy The Power of the Single Will Three Satanic Interludes The Will to Power Re-examined See also American philosophy List of American philosophers Topic. Notes and references Topic. Further reading Topic. Critical assessments Pickus, David. The Walter Kaufman Myth – A Study in Academic Judgment. Nietzsche Studien 32, 2003, 226-58. Ratner Rosenhagen, Jennifer. Dionysian Enlightenment, Walter Kaufman's Nietzsche in Historical Perspective. Modern Intellectual History 3, 2006, 239-269. Sokol, Walter. Political Uses and Abuses of Nietzsche in Walter Kaufman's Image of Nietzsche. Nietzsche Studien 12, 1983, 436-42. External links Walter Kaufman Web Project with useful links to his work and life. Selected works of Walter Kaufman. Manuscripts of Walter Kaufman at the Wayback Machine archived December 19, 2007. Grateful Student adds a memorial for Kaufman to Chapel Wall Princeton Alumni Weekly, 2013.